Hello, uh, I'm Phil Mealy. Uh, you might know me from uh, Early Doors, which I co-wrote with and was in with Craig Cash and the Royal Family, which I wasn't in, but I co-wrote with Craig and Caroline and various other radio shows and stage plays, etc. I've been asked by Nat and Michelle to bring you to a place in Manchester that I love, and I'm here in Fletcher Moss Park in Didsbury, which is a stone's throw from where I live, and it's a fantastic park. They've got a lovely cafe, and there's loads of lovely walks around here. Um, so that's where we are. Hello. Uh, I grew up in uh, Stockport, a sunny Stockport, a home of the land and the free and the brave, um, which is great, actually. Well, I was born in, in Reddish. I was born at home. All my, uh, all my mum's kids were born at home. She's never been to the hospital, and she's 88. Just thought I'd throw that in for you, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so I was brought up around there and lived in Heaton Norris uh, for years and years and years, which was great, um, which is where I met Craig, actually. Me and Craig Cash have known each other since I was about 13 or 14. We met, we used to work at Tesco's and we lived like five minutes from each other. So, uh, yeah, and we used to go in the pub, you know, like when we were young and I'd have one pint and like it'd be boiled. It was that warm by the end of the night. It was like, you know, you put some hot chocolate in it and, or a bit of Ovaltine and go to bed. But yeah, so yeah, I grew up uh, in Eaton Norris um, and I loved it around there. And then lived in Heaton Moor in Stockport for a while um, when I moved out from home when I was 17 and fell out with my dad, you know, like you do. And um, yeah, because uh, he kept protecting me from my mum. No, not really. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, uh, grew up in, in, in Eaton Norris, lived in Eaton Moor for a while, and now I live in Didsbury, which is like, I think the house prices went down when I moved in. I was going to say it's on the up, but the house prices went down when I moved in in Didsbury. But yeah, it's lovely around here. I really like it. Oh, when I was a kid in Stockport, there used to be a park near us called Manchester Road Park. I think it's still there, actually. Uh, and the competition was to see how many kids you could get angry from the goalposts. And I remember the parker used to tell us off because the goalposts looked like an M by the time we'd finished it. It all collapsed in the middle. So uh, don't sue me for that, by the way, you know, the parks or anything. It was a long time ago. It wasn't really me. I knew it was David Porter did most of it. So, yeah, I used to go around the park there. And we were out all the time, actually, when I was younger to different parks. And we, we had played football at the back, which I think... I don't want to get nostalgic or like sound like I'm dead old, but I think a lot of people have missed that. I think actually one of the things about lockdown, which has been great, is a lot of younger people. Listen, I've been out in the parks and stuff. There's a lot more people out, and I hope that continues really because I think it's just really good, you know, getting serious, guys. But I think it's just really good for your mental health and you just for your well-being. So yeah, carry on getting out. I've been really lucky to work with uh, some brilliant people. Um, and they've been unfortunate enough to work with me. But um, I think probably uh, the career highlight, I guess, was winning, we won the BAFTA for uh, the Queen of Sheba, um, which, is, which was brilliant, actually. Um, and I'm, really, I'm still really proud of that episode. I, I know they show it every, every other Christmas and things, and it's just, I remember the, the best day of writing, I think, me, Craig and Caroline ever had, was when we were writing that and we wrote the scene where Dave um, uh, reads a story to Nana from like a Mills and Boone story and um, you know he said look ahead in the road what there was a head in the road no no look ahead in the road it was that kind of thing but and and it was funnier to us writing it than it ever was on screen because we sort of all had like equal input and we just spent the day I don't know, there was just something about writing that that was a really bonding and really special for us. Um, yeah, it, and it wouldn't, you, I don't think you could ever capture that. Yeah, you know, you'd just have to have been in the room. So, sorry about that. But it was all, but, but I mean, it came out all right on screen, but it was, uh, yeah, just a fantastic day. Yeah, I've worked, and I've worked with some lovely people, despite what other people might think. I've worked with Steve Coogan, who's lovely. Um, I've worked with Bernard Hill. Uh, <laughs> uh, Caroline, of course, who's uh, sadly not with us, but uh, she is somewhere. But um, yeah, she was fantastic. And uh, I also worked with James McAvoy, 
who you know from he, he joined a band didn't he called the x-men i think don't don't they did very well were they, were they a band from america no james is great big memory great memory of him he's been in the press club singing uh dignity um and falling off the stage you're supposed to have dignity mate not lose it was i think his quote might be making it up you never know yeah oh and maxine peak she she's fantastic as well she was on early door she's a great actress isn't she yeah funny how we got a job really only me and craig got jobs just because we write it nobody employs anyone otherwise would they tesco's meet and greet going back to our roots you know so yeah worked with some cracking oh and tom courtney we worked with him he was lovely you know old tom courtney um <laughs> it sounds like an ice cream seller doesn't it old tom courtney no tom courtney billy liar and all that well he was on the royal family and in it he had to play the ukulele and i play the guitar and i was just having a little go on his ukulele um it's not a euphemism um he'd already got the part and um he was playing and he saw you seem to be a bit of a natural anyway i came in on the monday morning and the lovely man had bought me a ukulele songbook and said here here's a songbook for you to learn the ukulele on and at christmas i got a ukulele and started playing ukulele from that so i know tom can't be watching this so thanks tom yeah lovely man so yeah i've been dead lucky really on that score i, I was dead lucky uh, and going to gigs and stuff because my mate for uh, school his brother was older than us and he used to drive so he was like 18 and we were 15 and when the punk thing happened we used to he used to go to the gigs and we used to just tag along so i was really lucky because i went to the electric circus which is a massive big sort of punk venue in in in, in collierst so um, my favorite like one of my favorite gigs it's like the second gig i went to was the ramones um supported by talking heads that was pretty impressive isn't it uh, and the clash and i saw the stranglers and all that kind of stuff but I've, but i've always me and my mate steve used to go to gigs like all over rudimental were one of the best gigs i've seen one and that was at the uh i think that was at the academy um which was was fantastic so i've, I've sort of and really i love um i want to see uh the sparks and uh, franz ferdinand at the alba hall which is when it just reopened that's a fantastic venue so yeah i've been really lucky i've been to some sort of fantastic gigs um in manchester i do have to say although i hate to say it but one of the best gigs i did go to was in liverpool and that was echo and the bunny man did a full day thing called crystal day which you had to go on the ferry and, and you had to go to like the beatles museum and all that kind of stuff which was great apart from the accents it was fantastic i've been to quite a lot of the venues one of the venues uh, uh, was the hacienda I, when i was a member of the hacienda when it first opened i think like my number was something like 74 or something me and my mate walked all down whitworth street so i saw some fantastic bands there like simple minds i think and the new order obviously and and, and uh, yazoo and those kind of things and then i was in a band and uh, yeah so yes there's more the, the, yeah i've failed at lots of things you know uh, yeah, I was in a band and we played the Hacienda uh, at a Miner's Benefit gig supporting Mike Harding. So, um, but I want to think, and I still play now, um, play the guitar quite a, quite a bit, which is, if anybody thinks about taking an instrument, they should do, because one of the things about it, it's like when listening to music, playing music is a really great thing if you're kind of minds racing or, particularly now with, with the lockdown thing, I've come back more. I've listened to more music and played more music this last 12 months than ever before and you know if anybody's like struggling um if you can't you know first of all you should try and listen to music just to take your mind off it and stuff but another great thing to do is try and learn an instrument even you know and you don't have to be great you know i'm pretty rubbish at it but it's just a great thing for focusing your mind and sort of taking you away really and maybe concentrating your mind on on just one thing instead of it just sort of scattering around thinking of all the problems in the world that really the futile thinking about anyway because it's all about what's in the now and if you're in the now playing ever falling in love with someone about a bus cost life's great yeah so it's been a tricky it this last sort of 12 18 months and i think people have struggled i mean i, th I think th there'll be a lot of people who uh are casualties and um of um coronavirus you know um but the, with the mental health people have struggled with mental health over the last 12 months um, and um i've managed to develop some techniques to deal with mental health because i had i've had my own problems with it um 
One of the things I did, and I would recommend to anybody, and this is about eight years ago, I was really struggling. Um, and I just volunteered to do some work in, uh, well, I, I, I got in touch with Stockport Volunteers and started working um, at a place called Supportability, which is people with uh, extreme disabilities. But any volunteer work like that, it really does, um, it's a gift really, because you see the benefit that you're giving to people almost immediately and there's something really rewarding and, and it brings a little bit of value back to yourself and also it helps to put your own problems in perspective so I mean it really worked for me it doesn't you know there's no one right answer with, with mental health you just got to try a few things I tried everything like acupuncture and medication and hypnosis and all those kind of things so just try everything but but one thing that is really good I and really helped me is, is to volunteer or is to give to help somebody else because you get back more than you give in, in the end of the day so yeah that would be one of my suggestions yeah so we ended up doing a uh, early doors live We'd, we kind of thought about doing it for ages and then uh, a couple of years ago um, me and Craig thought well we started writing it in secret because we, we weren't sure whether it'd be any good anymore and it wasn't but we pressed on anyway you know so, um, but we only booked the Lowry because we, we sort of, and the small theatre in the Lowry, because it is very northern, it's very of this area really, it's very Manchester, it's very sort of working class and all that. And um, we thought, oh well, th there's a niche audience for it. And we knew that people liked it. But anyway, we booked it, two weeks later it had sold out. And then we moved to the bigger theatre and then that sold out. So we ended up taking it on tour. And it's surprising really, because it's more pop it's most popular around here and that people recognize it around here but when we've, we played like Hammersmith Odeon places like that and it's really weird it's like all these uh, expats or ex -nor ex flat caps ex northerners would come out and it was it was fantastic so we were in the bar afterwards like people from Eccles and oh where's that pub and so it's really it's funny how uh, working class humor I think it's something to do with the rhythm as well and the and the and the, the type of humor that is it's a bit caustic i remember when we tried to sell it to commissioners and they were like why are these people always taking the piss out of each other and being nasty to each other and we're not they, they love each other and that's how they express it see because we we don't do emotion do we as northerners we should do a bit more but that's that's just the way it is but yeah so um and we ended up we played manchester arena which is like you know just amazing really you know it's, it was just like I don't know, because uh, I've been in bands, I'd always thought, oh wow, wouldn't it be great? And it was just just playing there and, and, and all, having your family there and all your mates there and all that, all paying discounted prices, of course. Uh, but it was just, just fantastic. Yeah, love it round here, love the North, wouldn't live anywhere else. Because my mum would kill me. One of the things as well while we're in lockdown, so I, I've, me and Craig always write together. So we've, in lockdown, we've been Zooming We've never, never Zoomed before, don't even know what it was. It was a lolly, wasn't it, in our day, eh? But yeah, so we've do, been doing Zoom call stuff, which has been fantastic. Um, but during lockdown, especially again, you know, because it's been so like mental health and, and, and people have been struggling. One of the things that, that I was doing was we'd work in the morning and then I live quite close to Disbury Park. And then we'd just go for a sort of half hour walk just to get outside and just get in some fresh air. And also, you, you then realize when you're out it's, and you can look around, it's just great. It's so beautiful around here. Uh, you know, it, it, one of my favorite things about Manchester is that, well, is the people for a start. You can walk around any park and smile at people and they'll smile back. You know, you go in London, you, you smile at them. They're, all, they're already holding onto the wallet, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, uh, the, I think the greatest thing about here is the people and is all that adage about you know it being friendly in the north is absolutely true so yeah it's just get out have a go for a walk there's just some beautiful parts around here and nod and say hello to people because we're the it's the nicest places and the friendliest people isn't it you know that so we did early doors live a couple of years ago and it started off really small and ended up we were playing uh, arenas i'm not showing off i'm just telling you the story because we were people have asked about doing a live dvd but because it happened the way it did we didn't really uh, sort of plan to do a live recording uh, and loads of people have asked about it and i was talking to 
the production manager about this last year and he said oh actually when we played the arenas the company who like projected the images onto the screens at the side of the stage they sent me some footage anyway when we looked through it it was quite good it was really good and it was a because we didn't plan it it was a bit of a gift really um so we kind of wanted to and, and it was just sort of good fortune so we wanted to try and pass that gift on if you like so um any fans out there if you want to see early doors live on dvd um it's going to be online and all the proceeds we're doing it in conjunction with the christie in manchester which just seems a good fit because everybody around here if you haven't been treated by them you certainly know somebody who has had great treatment by them uh, friends and family so we're going to we're, we're streaming it and all the proceeds will go to the christie so uh yeah if you seen it live you'll be able to see it again if you didn't catch it live you'll be able to see it there and if you've ever wondered if you've heard people talk about early doors then catch it on there and uh, enjoy it and do something good with the money cheers thank you